But you must come back to me with your youngest brother. Your words will thus be verified, and you will not die. To this they agreed. Now comes the reckoning for his blood. The brothers did not know, of course, that Joseph understood what they said, since he spoke with them through an interpreter. But turning away from them, he wept. Give thanks to the Lord. Sing to him a new song. Pluck the strings skillfully with shouts of gladness. The Lord brings us to know the plans of nations. The eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him, upon those who hope for his kindness, that to deliver them from death and preserve them in spite of famine. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Alleluia, Alleluia. Hallelujah, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to drive them out and to cure every disease and every illness. The names of the twelve apostles are these. First, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James, the son of Alphaeus and Tadeus, Simon the Cananean and Judas Iscariot who betrayed Jesus. Jesus sent out these twelve after instructing them do not go into pagan territory or enter a Samaritan town. Go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go make this proclamation the kingdom of heaven is at hand the gospel of the lord we give honor and glory to god this morning for the gift of this new day and we thank god for god's blessings and we ask god to continue to bless us and bless those we encounter in the course of the day, and bless everything that we do and say for his greater honor and glory. Our gospel today from the 10th chapter of the gospel according to St. Matthew mentions the names of the 12 apostles. I was wondering if this happened in our present day and age of information technology. Perhaps the disciples will be swarmed by reporters asking them what made them follow Jesus. Or even Jesus himself would be asked, what made you choose these men? Then there seems to be nothing extraordinary about them. In fact, 
One was a tax collector hated by the people. And the other was Judas who betrayed him. And the rest were just ordinary fishermen. What made you choose them? And perhaps Jesus would say, I chose them because I want them to spread the good news. It's not about the quality or the characteristics of these people that Jesus chose them, but to spread the good news and to proclaim the kingdom. He needed these men, and I'm sure there were women also that were chosen. But Jesus needs people, not because of their standing <coughs> in the community, not because of their power or wealth or prestige or education. Jesus chose them because they had faith in him. And Jesus chose them because they were ordinary people like you and me. If they were so extraordinary, nobody would follow them and believe their message. All throughout his life, Jesus mixed with sinners. In fact, he said, for these I came. I did not come for those who are healthy, but for those who are sick, meaning sinners who need God. And Jesus, according to our gospel, gave them authority to drive out unclean spirits and to cure every disease and every illness. If we believe enough, we, the followers of Jesus, are also given that authority to drive unclean spirits and to cure every disease and every illness. But we begin with ourselves first, with a cleansing that we ask from God. And before we could say, I could cure you, we have to look into our souls what needs to be cured in us. Before we can proclaim the good news, we have to believe in the good news ourselves. And before we can proclaim our belief in Jesus, we have to encounter Jesus as our loving Savior and God. And this is my prayer for each one of us today that we who would like to follow Jesus and would like to be his disciples may have that faith in ourselves as being called by God, but most of all, have that faith and that encounter with Jesus, our Lord and our Savior in our daily lives. Amen. Where our treasure is, so will be our heart. Let us pray that we can use the good things around us to give us freedom in working for the kingdom of God. That our possessions do not become a hindrance to good relations with God and our neighbor. We pray to the Lord. That we realize that we must give not just of our goods, but of our very selves. 
we pray to the Lord. That our local church be not inward looking or complacent. We pray to the Lord. That we have the courage to make radical changes in our lives. We pray to the Lord. For those who faced economic uncertainty because of the pandemic, may God graciously look upon their needs and bring them relief and peace. We pray to the Lord. For our community amongst us, and an end to class distinctions so that we may be all one body, the people of God who love and serve one another, bringing hope to a distressed world. We pray to the Lord. For all the dead who rest in Christ, especially Mark Anthony Velasco, Harrison Colado, Lucena Hadrake, and Gigi Soriano, we pray to the Lord. For all who have asked our prayers, especially for the sick, Alma Villanueva and Blight Borsen. And for the special intentions of Ivy Chavez Cadiz and special intentions of Trish and Tony Brooke. We pray to the Lord. And now, for the many silent needs of our hearts. And for the repose of the soul of Jesus Napari Jr., we pray to the Lord. Father, make us one with you always, so that our joy may be holy and our love may give life. We ask this through Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received this bread we offer, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine may we come to share in his divine life, who humbled himself to share in our human life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received this wine we offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Let us pray, my dear sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord God, let the offering we dedicate to your name cleanse us and reshape us day by day with the new life of your kingdom. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. With love we remember his death. With firm faith we proclaim his resurrection. 
and with unwavering hope we await his coming in glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the saints, we join in their joyous hymn of your praise as we acclaim. fountain of all holiness, let your spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Before he was given up to death, a death he freely accepted, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, Again, he gave you thanks and praise. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith when in memory of his death and resurrection we offer you father this life-giving bread this saving cup we thank you for counting us worthy to be at your presence and serve you may all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church throughout the world. Make us grow in love together with Francis, our Pope, Salvatore, our Bishop, Domingo, our Pastor, Gabriel, our Vicar, your people here present, and your people everywhere who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember our brothers and sisters who have gone to their rest in the hope of rising again. We remember our loved ones, those who have gone before us, marked with the sign of faith. We also remember to pray for those who have died from this pandemic all over the world, for those who have no one to pray for them. Bring them and all the faithful departed into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all, make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the Apostles, with St. Joseph, St. Mary Magdalene, St. Teresa of Avila, St. Rita, and all your saints who have done your will throughout the ages. May we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. For through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we have the courage to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin, and protect us from all anxiety, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Let us pause for a moment and breathe in God's peace, the peace that only God can give and no one can take away. The peace that says to each one of us, let not your hearts be troubled, have faith in God and faith in me, says Jesus. And we pray for this peace to touch each one. We do not know what each one is going through, but may we hear the words of God assuring us, let not your hearts be troubled. Have faith in God and faith in me, says Jesus. And we pray for those who are going through some very difficult times, financially, emotionally, psychologically, mentally, physically, spiritually. May God give them the strength and the courage to carry on. May God surround them in his peace. Let not your hearts be troubled. Have faith in God and faith in me, says Jesus. And may the peace of the Lord be always with you. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Happy are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Our loving God, we give you thanks for the gift of this day. We thank you for the gift of the Eucharist, for the body and blood of our Lord Jesus, bread that is broken and blood that is shed for us, our food for our journey. We thank you for your word, reminding us that we too are called to be your disciples. May our lives be the good news for others. And this we ask through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. Have a blessed day.